it, it, you were worried about this guy, would you go ahead and send molecular testing on him? And if it's a harmful cell, are you going to find anything that's helpful? So yes, yes, and no. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, um, as you know, Mike, um, with Herthel cell cancers, what we now understand is that there are frequently mutations in the mitochondrial DNA um, that are not druggable. Um, we also often see widespread loss of heterozygosity um, in these cancers that you know, we think also is another driver alteration, also not targetable. Um, we rarely find um, things that are potentially druggable, like a BRAF E6 600 E mutation or gene fusions. If I saw a Herthel cell with, a, say, an Entrec fusion, I would ask the pathologist to go back and tell me it's a really yeah. a Herthel cell. <laughs> um, so um, we, so we do. We, we, um, I think you know the the right answer is only if you expect that the patient's going to need systemic therapy should you do molecular diagnostics. Um, but you know we're trying to do as molecular diagnostics as much as possible in these more worrisome cancers so that we have the information when we need it to make treatment decisions and then also so that we can continue to learn as much as possible. Yeah, and there was a there was a second question that asked, could we use the molecular testing to decide radioactive iodine? Where well, everybody's working on that right now. Like the BRAF V600Es are less likely to concentrate radioactive iodine, but it's not zero. Maybe 10% of them do. The RAS are more likely. So we use it as sort of modifying factors, but you can't use it as a yes or no. 